following has been developed by state and provincial agencies in association with the Agency for Instructional Technology. Together, serving education. Snack only at the shopping center, love mom. P.S. You have mail. Finally, my entry form for the contest. You must correctly answer all three questions and the bonus question in order to win the $50 first prize. I'll get started right away so I'll have my entry form in early. Let me see. Sarah rushed home from school so she could get some of the pie her mom had baked the night before, but she found that her brother Bob had beat her to it. Mom had cut the pie into fifths. Bob was eating his second slice. If Sarah eats one slice, what is the total amount of pie the kids ate? Oh, that's easy. All I have to do is add the fractions together. The pie was cut into five pieces. That's fifths. So I'll just write out the numbers as fractions. Bob had two pieces. That's two-fifths. And Sarah had one piece. That's one-fifth. Two plus one is three, and five plus five is ten. So that's three-tenths of the... Three-tenths? But I thought the pie was cut into fifths. Uh-oh, there's something wrong. I better slow down. Now, if I had a pie, it might look like this. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, Bob had these two pieces, and Sarah had this one. One, two, three, fifths, not tenths. The kids ate three fifths of the pie. That's got to be right. Robert almost lost the contest on the first question. That's because he was trying to work with fractions in the same way he might work with whole numbers. Any fraction can be understood if you just remember that the denominator, the number below the line, tells you how many equal size parts something has been divided into. Like this example. These are whole apples, three of them. If I add two more to the group, then I have five whole apples, right? But now look at this. This is one whole apple which has been cut into five equal size pieces. So these two slices would represent two-fifths of the whole apple. This is how you'd write the fraction. Two-fifths, or two-fifths. The two represents two of the five equal pieces of the whole apple we're dealing with, and is called the numerator. And the five represents the denominator, or how many equal size parts the apple has been divided into. Now let's think about what we would do if we wanted to add two-fifths to one-fifth. How would we go about it? Because the denominators are the same, we can write the problem like this. It helps you to understand what you're doing when you add fractions with like denominators. The word fifths lets us know we're working with the same kinds of things. And we just add two plus one and get three fifths. Now if we write this problem using numbers, see what happens. We're adding fifths, so two plus one is three fifths. Notice that the denominator stayed the same because they tell what we're adding. Now let's see how Robert's competition is doing with the next fraction problem in the contest. This is a two-part problem. First try part one, then try part two. Be careful. Part one. On Sunday morning, Mom made six and one-fourth waffles. Jane eats two and one-fourth waffles, and her brother Bob eats three and two-fourths waffles. How many waffles did the kids eat? Express your answer as a fraction. First thing I'll do is write out the numbers so I can add them. Two and one-fourth 
plus 3 and 2 fourths. I think I should add the fractions first. Or am I supposed to add the whole numbers first? Hello? Oh, hi, Robert. Do you remember if you're supposed to add the whole numbers first or the fractions first when adding mixed numbers? Hey! After discovering hey, that they're both unsure time. about adding and subtracting mixed numbers, numbers yeah. Jennifer and Robert agreed to work together on the contest and share the prize. And you had part two? Well, I think we should add the whole numbers first. But wait, Jennifer, if these were all whole numbers, we'd add the ones column first, wouldn't we? See, if these were all whole numbers instead of fractions, we'd know exactly what to do. Oh, okay. Well, since the denominators are the same, let's just add the numerators. That's simple. One-fourth plus two-fourths equals... Three-fourths. And two plus three is five. So the answer to the first part is five and three-fourths. Now we can tackle part two. How many waffles were left after the kids ate? Show the steps you take in finding your answer. So all we have to do is... But wait, there's more. Don't forget you'll have to do some renaming to get the correct answer. And that's the tricky part. While the well, kids think about I how think to do the renaming, the let's take a look at how fractions are used in some tasty ways. When creating new products, fractions are very important. We're going to experiment with peanut butter in a chocolate chip cookie recipe. I have six ingredients. I will put one fourth teaspoon peanut butter into the first container, a half teaspoon of peanut butter into the second container, a whole teaspoon of peanut butter into the third container, And then we will keep track of which container, which batch has which amount of peanut butter in it. Maybe the old recipe isn't so bad after all. Hey, we've got a waffle iron right here. Maybe if we look at it, we'll get some ideas. Yeah, but that's only one waffle iron. What do we use for waffles? One paper waffle at your service. Hey, that's neat. Let me do one. So this stands for the six and one-fourth waffles their mother made. Now we can take away five from the whole waffles. One, two, three, four, five. And the kids ate three-fourths of a waffle. I'll just cut out the one-fourth that wasn't eaten. And I'll add that to this one-fourth which gives us the answer, two-fourths of a waffle. We just solved the second part. We're going to win. Uh-oh. What's the matter? We have the right answer. Remember this part? Show the steps you take in finding your answer. We didn't do that. Which means we lose the contest if we don't get our work on paper. But how can you possibly subtract three-fourths from one-fourth? <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a very rich merchant who lived next door to a very poor pie man. The merchant sold expensive fabrics like silks and satins, which came in odd lengths like three and three-fourths breeders. This meant that he was always having to work with fractions, which made him think that he must be very good at math. Much better than his poor neighbor, the pie man, who just had to sell pies and cakes. You don't need to know any math to do your job. But look what I have to do. When Lord Toffinose comes to buy one and one-fourth fritters of silk, and I have three and three-fourths fritters in stock, to find out how much silk I'll have left, I first subtract the top number of one-fourth from the top number of three-fourths to get two-fourths, and then I subtract the whole number one from the whole number three to get my answer, which is two and two-fourths. It was all very clever stuff, and it made the merchant feel more and more pleased with himself, and the poor pie man feel more and more of a loser until one day 
Lady Ladida came to buy one and three-fourths freeders of velvet, and all the merchant had in stock was two and one-fourth freeders. To find out how much velvet he'd have left, the merchant started to go through his usual routine. First, I take the top number of three-fourths from the top number of one-fourth, and... Wait a minute. I can't take three from one. I'm sorry, your ladyship, but I can't sell you any velvet today because I can't subtract one and three-fourths from two and one-fourth. Oh, this is terrible. <coughs> Excuse me, but perhaps I could help. You? What do you know about fractions? Not much, but I do know about pies. Let's pretend fritters Ooh. are pies. You have two and one-fourth pies. Lady Lottida wants to buy one and three-fourths pies. <laughs> you can't take three-fourths from one-fourth, it's true. But you can make use of one of your whole pies. After all, you get one-fourth of a pie by slicing up a whole pie into fourths. So you can think of a whole pie as four-fourths. So what? So, if you add the four-fourths of one of your whole pies to the one-fourth of a pie, you now have one and five-fourths pies. And you can take three-fourths from five-fourths. The answer is two-fourths. <laughs> then you take one whole number from one whole number. <laughs> so you'll have two-fourths left. Two-fourths of a pie or two-fourths fritters of velvet. Thank you very much. That's very clever. Oh, it's not clever. It's as easy as pie. A lot of good these things did. But we can't give up yet. There's $50 at stake here. Robert, you're supposed to wake me up when you got home. Hi, Jennifer. I'm sorry, I forgot. Hey, it wouldn't be cheating if we asked him to help us with it. Hey, George, do you think you could help us with this math problem? Look, I'm already late. Paul's here to pick me up for work, and I can't keep him waiting. Sorry. Please. And I won't tell Mom about what happened last Wednesday. She already knows, Robert. But I'll help you, so you'll owe me one. What's the problem? We have to subtract 5 and 3 fourths from 6 and 1 fourth, and it can't be done. Well, it tells you right there it has something to do with renaming. Yeah, but we can't remember how to do that. How could you write 1 as a number of fourths? Um... Oh, come on, you guys think. How many fourths equals one whole? Four. This should be able to help you out. But how? Four fourths and one whole are just two ways of saying the same thing. There's Paul. Gotta go. But how's that gonna help us with the subtraction? What you want to do is change the numerator of the fraction in a larger number. The numerator you're subtracting from has to be larger than the numerator of the other fraction. But how? You figured out. It's simple. Bye. Simple for him. Yeah. He said that the numerator of the fraction of the larger mixed number had to be made larger than the other numerator. What if... I got it. What if we add four-fourths to one-fourth? And that equals five-fourths. And five-fourths is larger than three-fourths. So we can subtract. So now we have a numerator large enough to subtract three from. Why don't we rewrite the problem since we have a different fraction to work with? Yeah, that four-fourths had to come from six, which makes the rename number five and five-fourths. I think we're getting close. Yeah, instead of six and one-fourth, we get five and five-fourths. And we can do the subtraction. And we get the right answer! We won! We won! Wait a minute, we still have another problem in the bonus question to answer. Oh, we're halfway there. Fifty dollars, here I come. Hey, that's half for you and half for me. Remember? Not a fraction less. MathWorks is a component of the Mathematics for the 80s project and is supported in part by Exxon Education Foundation. This program was produced by the Illinois State Board of Education under the supervision of the Agency for Instructional Technology.